On today's episode of Watch Jericho, we buy a Nissan Xterra that doesn't move in the middle of a field. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jericho and today I'm here with Micah. What's going on dude? What's Mike, up, man? It's Micah, right? Yep. Okay, cool. <laughs> so I just wanted to be sure. Uh, and this is a 2005 or 6? Six, 6. 6 Nissan Xterra with a bad transmission. And it was sitting out in the middle of this field. And of course, as you guys know, it's been crazy cold and snowing here for a long time. So we had to pull it out of the hole up here where you have an epic driveway. It's like all asphalt and everything. Yeah, a little Super mud. nice, yeah. And uh, the driveway made it pretty easy for us to get this thing on the trailer. We've got it loaded up. Let's get it home and start checking this thing out. Uh, and thanks, man. Yeah, you bet, thank uh, we'll, you. We'll get it sorted out and uh, I'm sure you, you'll see it on the internet or back on the I road sure soon. Will. <laughs> all right, man, thank you so much. See you later. Oh man, you already found the main problem. The hatch struts are bad. <laughs> well, we wouldn't expect anything different. Totally. Totaled. Can you jump again? Can you do it? Come on. <laughs> no, I'm done jumping. <laughs> we are rocking the four wheel drive today because this is what we're driving down. Check it out. This is that old single track right here. This is an all stone bridge that's like really famous. I've been under that bridge one time. Anyway, we got that thing for $750 and it's crazy clean. And then Eric a second ago was like, the thing that you want is on Facebook Marketplace. We hopped on Facebook Marketplace. A guy has a transmission listed for $100 and says it shifts good. So uh, hopefully we're heading straight there to stick a transmission in the back of this truck and have a running Xterra for $850. The old truck and trailer got pretty dirty pulling this thing out of the mud pit it was in. So uh, we're gonna rinse everything off here in the car wash and really spray off where the transmission is, basically the whole undercarriage right here. That should make it really easy when we have to start pulling this thing apart very soon. Just put a million dollars in this thing. We got six whole minutes. Dude, this tire is completely flat and we pushed it on there basically. You can see it out in the field. We are here for one thing, and if you guessed Lucas transmission fix, go ahead guys. You got it right, because it's probably gonna drive off this trailer. Let's go get some. So this is the classic move right here. This has fixed a million transmissions for me. I usually get 100,000 more miles out of it with that. But there's so many options here. Think we should switch it up? I don't know. Hmm. That's it, right? The transmission. <laughs> Done deal. All right, thanks guys. Yep. We're gonna we're gonna send this Xterra's transmission to the grave right now. <laughs> It is already there. Where's all the candy? <laughs> Nissan, Nissan, Nissan. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. And this is kind of part of its demise. So the first generation Xterra is one of my favorite trucks of all time. I was pretty young when they came out because they came out back at 21 years ago. And I was in love with them. You'd see yellow ones cruising around on the street. Yellow was the color for your Xterra. And all you could think is that's got to be an awesome truck. And at the same time, Nissan released the greatest commercials anyone has ever seen. There were like, I think there were a hundred of them and every one of them said like 101 uses and the truck would like pull up, be doing something crazy and it would just say Nissan Xterra, 101 uses. You know, they'd be driving off a waterfall with it or something, it doesn't even make sense. Uh, you know, white water rafting, rock climbing, of course they had a first aid kit, which we need to check and see if this one has a first aid kit because I don't think they ever got rid of that. But Let's talk about this truck. First, like I said, it's one of my heroes, but that was the first generation. This is the second generation. The first generation had the old VG33 3.3 liter V6, and you could also get it supercharged with a little Eaton, you know, the baby and all the OEMs used. It's the M62. I was really planning on buying a first gen. I didn't even realize this was a second gen when I went to buy it, and uh, supercharging it for you guys because there's not that many supercharged ones around. But. We ended up with the new, the second gen, the one with the four liter in it. And the four liter makes 265 horsepower, which is funny because the supercharged first gen made 210. And that's a really, really bad 210. As you know, the M62 is non-intercooled and is basically just a heater for the air. And it, it makes what, 30 horsepower by eating up all your efficiency. So this thing, much better efficiency, a much bigger truck too. It's body on frame, they're both body on frame, but 
it's body on frame, it's heavy, and it has creature comforts. It's, it's just a much nicer truck. So we know this thing runs from the old owner. He had it started when we pulled up and uh, starts right back up. And while we were at the car wash, Eric pulled out the transmission dipstick and was like, smell this fluid. Yeah, that fluid's gone. So we stopped at O'Reilly's like you guys saw. We're gonna put some Lucas Transfix in it, see if it actually fixes it. It, uh, sometimes it does. I planned on buying this and putting a transmission in it, but it'd be funny if we can drive it off the trailer. I'd be pretty happy about that. First, let's do a quick walk around, check out the truck. Over here, the tires, what's funny, $750. These are Falcons in great shape. And look at these wheels. Look at these wheels. There's no curb rash. Obviously, it's kind of hard to rash big off-road tires, but the tires are in great shape. The brakes are in great shape. The wheels are excellent, absolutely excellent. And these are 265, 70, 16. So a pretty reasonable size. And uh, from, from the days when wheels were smaller and the tire was bigger and you just had a better ride and better suspension. It's crazy that they're six lug. It is crazy they're six lug, right? This thing's a monster. Even though this is a two wheel drive. I should add, this is not the actual four wheel drive one. You could get it either way. And uh, this is a two by with a huge drive shaft. It's gigantic. So uh, you get all the benefits of the four wheel drive truck. Just no transfer case. It might be dirty in here, but it sure does look nice. Check that out. Classic Nissan mats that aren't torn up. The uh, logos aren't lifting off of them yet. The seats are in fine shape. We got a little bit of wear on the center console there. Man, that thing's lit. Oh, there's a CD in there. What do we have? What do we have? This is always good. Well, whatever that CD is in the center console, I can't get it out. Change holder, possibly a cassette holder, and uh, pin holders, uh, cigarette lighter in there, or accessory socket, cup holders that are removable so you can clean them. Nissan making this thing the epic off-roader it was meant to be. Got a button here for stability control. Basic, basic climate controls that look rugged are very cool. And a steering wheel with cruise control on it. Only that window is auto. I think this is an S. There's a bunch of different trim levels. I think S, SE, and uh, uh, there's some higher trim levels for sure. This one's pretty, pretty basic. No leather, no heated seats. Oh, check this out, a dual glove box, just like the old F-250. The manual's in there. What a win. Even all the stickers. Thing is in great shape. C-pillar door handles, which are cool, way up high. And uh, doors open really wide, but the access is pretty bad. Like we got a little, the rust is trying. We'll get this thing clean and stop it. But uh, it was trying to come through there. Oh, solid behind. It looks like we have more cup holders in the center and that pretty much wraps up the passenger compartment. Let's open the back. Rear wiper, terrible hood struts like we talked about before. Uh, the first aid kit's gone, but it's a very, very usable back end. Check out this giant, it's all plastic. The seats flip down, tons of cargo room and tons more cargo room. We've got some nets to catch things under there. A spare all the way under the truck. Take a look under there. Full size, nice. This truck has a Davis Moore logo on the back and they used to own the Nissan dealership here, which makes me think it could have been sold new in Wichita and driven its whole life right here without ever leaving, which is kind of a cool story. It has 141,000 miles on the clock. Big old door ding right there, and this panel's been at least kicked, donkey kicked or something. It has PPF though, and uh, these edges are all PPF'd. It's honestly really nice after a quick detail. No issues over here. Man, I am excited about this truck. Check out this step. This step lets you get up onto the roof rack, which is a very functional roof rack. <laughs> and you can open up that top compartment there called the gear rack. So let's go open up the gear rack, flip up the handle. It's got its own hood struts that are bad. Check that out. You can take that out. You can do whatever you want with that gear box. I do want to mention how many awards, how much people love this thing when it came out. And I really think it sold terribly. I don't really think there's that many of them around compared to something like that, that actually sells like a Tahoe. Early on, the Xterra was out there winning awards. In 2000, Sport Utility of the Year for Motor Trend, 2000, North American Truck of the Year, 2000, New England Motor Press. Uh, anyway, those are, those are all first-gen awards. Here we go with this exact truck, the 06. 
2006, nominated as North American Truck of the Year. 2006, Motor Trend Sport Utility of the Year. 2006, Motor Trend Truck Best Little Guy SUV Award. 2006, Car and Driver Rock Hopper SUV Winner. 2006, 4x4 of the Year from Peterson's Four Wheel and Off Road. 2006, Editor's Most Wanted from Edmunds. And uh, that's, that's just the awards it won in 06, which is insane. So. Now we've got one. It didn't cost too much, obviously 750 bucks. It's got the right battery in it, check that out. 1116 Super Start right there. Four liter twin turbo V6, I'm kidding. Boost pipe. Good old, it's a, yeah, that's, that's the boost pipe right there. Now, uh, a naturally aspirated four liter that makes 265 horsepower. What we're gonna do now is grab some Lucas transmission fix, throw it in this transmission. I actually think it might be overfilled a little. We should wipe it off. Man, it just smells, it looks like new fluid and is straight up burnt. So, uh, really we'll just overfill it. It smells so bad. It smells terrible. Let's get this going. I'm making you do it because you have to squeeze that bottle as hard as you possibly can unless you put it in water or uh, heat it. It's like squeezing molasses into a transmission dipstick. Syrup. Straight syrup. <laughs> Ooh, the brakes are terrible. It has to be the converter. It's, you can hear it like right in here, which is definitely the middle of the transmission. All right, back it out. See if it'll actually move. I think it's just gravity. Give it some throttle. Oh, I think it caught. Did it? All right, all right. My wheels, I can't see you're that. good, you're good. You're like, I got the ramps right for you. The brakes are amazing. The, it's weird, the pedal feels terrible, but the brakes do work. Even better, the e-brake actually works really well. Color me impressed. Color. Will it drive? Full speed launch. <laughs> it was worth a shot. Oh, it's heavy. Ah, oh, this, this is easy. It's only 5,000 pounds. That's it. Gotta get it. Going up. I am in love with this car. Check out this transmission job. This is gonna be one of the easiest jobs I've ever done in my life. Usually you have to pull the exhaust every time. It's wide open. The whole transmission assembly just drops out. Uh, it looks like you might have to unbolt this cross member and those bolts, uh, what, nine bolts there, something like that, maybe 10. The bell housing, the transmission cooler lines, uh, the prindle probably, and no prindle. Couple things, it's just a couple bolts, pull the drive shaft and this thing comes out and the exhaust can stay in place, which, yeah, it sure can. That is unbelievable, go Nissan. Steering rack, super easy, take a look at that. Pan, like a three minute job. <laughs> Tiny little pan. Oh man. So what? the drive shaft can go up here. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's adorable. Wow, I love two wheel drive. I love two wheel drive. This is sweet. Well, that's our inspection. Uh, we're gonna buy a transmission. We're gonna put it in this thing and it's gonna sell for probably $3,000. It's kind of the going rate. And we'll have about two in this thing. We'll see, we'll see. Uh, but it's gonna be fun, and I wanted this because it's one of those kind of grail cars, and it's from the era of Nissan that was really awesome. They built so many cool cars in the early 2000s, and I love them. I had a lot of Nissans, I just didn't have one of these. I think we're gonna go on a Nissan buying spree just to show you guys how cool those cars are and how easy they are to work on. All right, let's pull this fluid. Eric's on it. I'll steal your light. We're gonna shine this through the fluid and see if we can see all the junk in it. Oh, that fluid is brand new. Every single inch of it. It might smell burnt, but look how clean that is. There's not a not a bit of metal on that. I don't know if it's magnetic, but there is no metal. The crush washer's new. Oh, she toast. It smells like death. Yeah, yeah, death. <laughs> that, that, that's the word for it. It's bad. They must have put this fluid in it and then just went out and just drove it wide open throttle until it stopped moving. 
Oh well, she's getting a transmission. Well, that is my new 2006 Nissan Xterra, a cheap flip. Many of you have asked for them. And uh, obviously the Audi is as well. The Audi is a huge flip, a $5,000 car. I'll sell for 10. So we're gonna get them both done pretty quickly here. Transmission jack is on the way once that's here and I'll order a transmission tonight. We should have this one done really, really fast. I'm excited about this. I hope you guys are too. So that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop, watchjerger.com where you get cool shirts just like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do. And I will talk to you next time. Ah, I don't know if you wanna do that. I'm kidding, the breaker's off. It would have been funny. Anyway, uh, my haircut, it's fixed. Huge thank you to uh, Justin Gilman. It's uh, Jay Gilman here in Wichita. He just took care of it, solved the problem from that terrible Plaza Barbers in Andover. I can't say enough bad things about them. They literally blamed my haircut on me. It was, it was upsetting. Uh, we got the heat going. Uh, we, it took a long time. That one just kept running, and when that one would come on, that one wouldn't come on, and then it was just tripping. And We got the pressure set finally. We got 3.5 at all the valves. We couldn't get the regulator outside to get enough pressure, but eventually we did. We got 12 inches of water column on the gas line side. 3.5 on this side, and then this valve didn't even open. So we had to tear that entire Honeywell gas valve all the way down and rebuild it. And what we found out was the pilot was like jammed up and it probably uses the pilot gas to open the main gas uh, with that solenoid for it. So we got it sorted out and it gets warm in here in a hurry now. For the first time in a long time, we're comfy. Also, I shot this video on the old camera because I forgot the good camera. My bad. What? <laughs> the scammer just hung up on me immediately. They literally called, it was one of those things that said like, there's fraudulent charges on your account. So we, I was like, yeah, we better answer this. And uh, I, I hit the button and I was like, there's fraudulent charges on my account. He just hung up on me. That's not even a good scammer. Dude's not persistent at all.